Arslanash was the symbol of a whole country. He's the Phoenix ahead! He's the Phoenix behind! He oh, blocked it! it. It's over. Arslan's gonna get the tournament! Arslan, he's your Evo Japan champion! For a shining moment, Arslan stood on top of the world. Arslan just win the Evo tournament! Oh, oh my god! Oh! He got it! He got it! And Arslan Edge is your Evo 2019 champion, ladies and gentlemen! But the opposition rallied. Me is your Tekken 7 champion at Evo 2022! Arslan didn't fall off, but he did fall behind and he wanted more. He wanted to stand at the apex of Tekken once again. He wanted to conquer the world. He wanted to make history. Arslan Ash wanted to win, and no one could stop him. The jab, what's gonna happen? The whip, oh my god! No Arslan no Ash takes it, goes to grand finals. That is the seat, that is destiny. Wow, what a Bruh. set, guys. You gotta give it up Y'all gonna tell me that's not some good ass Tekken, bro. <sighs> Look at what Tekken 7 has delivered to us, time and time again. We can always go back to the Tekken 7 well, bro. He's close. Look, he's emotional right he's now. He's right there, bro. He's so he's close. Bro, he's right there. All right, so before we start talking about Arslan, just a friendly reminder to please like the video, sub to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on notifications so you never miss any of our upcoming content. Arslan Ash owned Tekken in 2019. He won EVO and EVO Japan, put Pakistan on the map, and Tekken was never the same. But as tournaments went online, things slowed down. There weren't as many opportunities for Arslan to cement his godhood. And when tournaments returned in full swing in 2022, Arslan fell short of glory. Tournament life on the line, gone to eliminate Arslan S. Arslan was out of range of the back dash. Arabukin, that'll do it. Arslan S is eliminated from Evo. Gone, we'll be moving on to the grand finals. Then, as the 2022 season came to a close, Arslan missed playoffs at the Tekken World Tour Finals, drowning in groups. Pakistani competitor Atif, known for his deep knowledge of many characters, took the win over Junding in the final, so Arslan's homeland remained on top. But for the player who was supposed to be the best in the world, that wasn't enough. Sure, he went deep at EVO and won some other smaller tier one tournaments, but losing in groups at the world finals was a massive blow to his reputation. It was a far cry from his incredible 2019 debut. Now, as 2023 began, Arslan bounced back. Everything's hitting, mid, low, mid. Down oh, forward to win punish again. Perfect spacing. Uh, uh. One, two, three, into mix. Ooh, that could have been in on the dot. And Arslan Ash, is going to be your Evolution 2023 you win. Japan winner. Giving thanks to God for the victory at EVO Japan here. 2023 takes it in winner's bracket. This guy doesn't know anything other than winner's bracket and grand finals. For the first time since 2019, Arslan Ash was again an EVO Japan champion. It was his third EVO title. I really wanted to win this one. Uh... Yeah, because after losing Tekken World Tour Final, I worked so hard every day, like six, seven, eight hours. Uh, so it means a lot to me. But Arslan wanted more. He wanted the first ever triple crown, wins at EVO Japan, EVO, and the TWT Finals, an event he'd never even performed well at before. So as he began reinventing himself in his search for greatness, Arslan regularly enlisted the help of another character to help him break down the door. The Lydia coming out from Chikrin, Kuni Mitsu from Arslan. This is the character he's been rocking now. You used to be the Zafina, yep. but now it's Kuni Mitsu. They're going to arena stage, very small stage. Good for both players, both characters. And Arslan stuck with Kuni Mitsu after the experiment worked. It's funny because when we were we were in Bali, we were commentating his matches. He pulled out the Kuni Mitsu one of the first times. We were like, bro, what's up with the Kuni Mitsu? And he was like, I'm working on it. And yeah. then I saw the golden letters as well, right. and it's built up. And look how strong he is. Arslan wasn't just improving his already excellent play. He was diversifying it. 
Zafina was great at poking and worked well with his evasive approach, but new picks gave his opponents new challenges. It made sense. Tekken 7 had a huge roster with many characters that were rarely played competitively, and even high-tier picks had bad matchups. Now look, a lot of times what happens in competitive fighting games, the better you get, the bigger the target on your back. Arslan Ash has the biggest target biggest. in Tekken. I'm telling you right now. What Arslan seemed to be doing was giving himself options. He'd never been the kind of player to only have one, but his style evolved alongside Kunimitsu in the months leading up to EVO in August. And when he got there, it became obvious pretty quickly that his Kuni was a problem. Such good defense of Arslan. He's like, he changed the play style, but uh oh, got clipped a little bit. Now he's dealing with range. Wait a minute. No way. The no way. Ups! Okay, Arson doesn't bite. Oh, wow! Went for out. gold! And Keisuke went with the down four, so he got low crush. 15 seconds! 15, 15, 15, 15 seconds! Oh my god! Double red! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. Down four to one! Arson Ash, hang on! He's going to the top three! One in will do it! And Arson Ash survived the rain drive attempt! It seems to never look there! It is! Arson Ash is your Tekken 7 champion at EVO 2023! Yet again! Four times. Count it. Four times. Two Not in Japan. Two in the States, baby. Two in Vegas. Four EVO titles. Hit him with the four. Wow, I've been about to have seen that one here at EVO before. Arslan took down Ao, cementing himself as the best Kunimitsu and reclaiming his crown as EVO champion. Finally, it was 2019 all over again. Both EVO trophies for 2023 were his, matching his personal best. But could he now take it? even further. Could Arslan win the Tekken World Tour Finals for the first time ever and make history? Now, Arslan's game continued to evolve in the five months between EVO and the finals. He went to South Korea in the fall, taking Uprising Korea in enemy territory. He later told Kaku Chopre in an interview that during his time there, a curious name was on everyone's lips, Katarina Alves. When I was in Korea, I asked people like, who are their top three, the way you're asking me, and who are their top five? players, characters in the game, almost everyone said Katarina is the top three or top five at least, which I think is she is not. But I want to see like if the whole community and your Korean community is like very strong, if the whole community is saying that that character has potential, so she must have potential. I want to explore her potential. I want to see how good she, that character is. So that's why I wanted to try Katarina. Genghis Dawn, an American Katarina player, had finished fourth at EVO, while an Italian Katarina main named Girlanda was making waves as well. Arslan had actually been sent to losers at Uprising Korea by a Katarina player named Galgonye before winning the run back on Kunimitsu. At that same tournament, Arslan had used Noctis to counter Atif's Akuma. Tekken 7 was about to be replaced by its sequel, which meant that Counter picks and pocket characters could provide a decisive advantage at this late stage of the game's life. And by the Tekken World Tour Finals, it was clear. Arslan had transformed from aspiring challenger to final boss. In 2023, his consistency had no contemporary parallel, but he was also diversifying his character choices. He swept Ao aside in groups in another Kuni mirror match. He played Zafina against Kokoma's Feng. His Kuni was too strong for Wraith, and then against Anakin, he first tried Nina, and then won two in a row using Noctis. Leaving groups with a 4-0 match record, Arslan Ash was the one that everyone wanted to beat. Arslan's emergence had changed Tekken, and now one of its prior champions had returned to try him. He's been away from the game for a while, but now back with the vengeance. He is here to fight, and which player influenced him the most is the guy he's going to be facing. Right? Arslan Ash. I mean, look, I, it was one of the things Kate Wiz pointed out yesterday. He's like, yeah, I think it is Arslan Ash. Yeah. But not in the way that you think it is. This yeah. is like, yo, I need to go beat that guy, Arslan Ash. EVO 2018 champion Lohai wanted to win, but knew that would almost certainly mean facing a player as impactful as Arslan. Lohai's Brian looked oppressive after Arslan's Noctis blind pick went awry in game one. But after the break, Arslan brought out the thief and settled in. Let's see, I'm gonna see this character. 
Uh, the Kuna Mitsu. You called just it, as Steve. I figured. Just as I figured. But we're going to the beach. He's fishing right now with the three plus four. Not even getting anything big. Looking for a counter hit right there. Arsenal Ash doesn't bite. Follow up here. What's he gonna do at the wall? Nice. The fisherman against the wall. He loves these combos. Uh. Oh, that was a sick adjustment. Oh, and the round goes to low high. No break on the one plus two. Uh, not Ooh. dead though. One mix-up could do it. Lose the power crush to get through Arslan Ash. Did you see the life bar? It's like he reacted to it. You could see the emotion drain from Lohai's face after the game. Whatever happened with the Noctis was in the distant past. He's gonna have to watch out for the big sweep too. He's got a chance to oh! big swing with the jet upper. It's blocked. Looking for the set. One mix up could do it. One more hit. And Arslan Ash, three rounds straight. Arslan was one series win away from the Tekken World Tour Grand Finals. Korea's Ulsan, who took him to final final round at EVO, was the only remaining winner's side opponent. He'd previously played Bob, but also tried Kazumi here. This was a character that Arslan knew well, and had often played in earlier years. But with both players sticking to their character picks, Arslan started to fall behind. We're starting to see more variety from the lows. Great, put, put, put the brakes on there. Oh my god, look at Ulsan. Hold look at Ulsan. Ulsan with this momentum and once Set. again finishing the down four, one, two. He's challenging. Using oh, the art of interruption, guaranteed follow up there with the four. Oh my god, I can't Turned believe around he, and did that. He just did it. Oh, yo, 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 no way, that's down gonna hurt. Two. Watch out for the rage drive. Oh, the jab. Oh, oh my, my god. god. Osan in control. Arslan in trouble. 4 4 2. But not out of this yet. No throw break again. on the throw. Not dead. Only a sliver of life. What happens next? Spins the blue. 25 seconds left on the clock. Oh, oh. the second in. Here we go. Final, final, final round. round. Oh my god. He's back to the wall. He has to be careful. He has to be oh careful. Oh my god. He missed. He oh, missed. get off of me. Five, Five seconds, seconds left, left on the clock. The jab. What's going to happen? The whip. Oh my god. He's close. Look, he's emotional right he's now. He's right there, bro. He's so he's close. Bro, he's right there. This was it. The last match of Tekken 7. One set to make history. Cherry Berry Mango was the only competitor left, and he typically played Noctis. So Arslan played a character that most people would not expect. Oh, here we go, bro. Who is this on the screen? I, this is, it was, I don't think that's an accident. I don't think that's right. an accident at all. As Feedy X, an American Noctis player who upset Arslan at CEO 2023, would later reveal on his YouTube channel, he had spoken with Arslan about using Katarina as a potential counter after losing to CBM at a tournament in Cape Town. He ended up asking me so many questions about Noctis. He played some Noctis himself, and we kind of worked on different ideas for how he could counter Noctis. He arrived at uh, Katarina and Julia as his two picks. Um, he felt that, and I agree, that Kunimitsu versus Noctis is not the best matchup. I think that Kuni's strengths lie in the ability to deny the uh, opponent the consistent ability to hit her. And CBM couldn't stop Arslan's cat in a close first game. Still, CBM locked an infinite Azure and took the second. Trying to catch him again. This time again with the Shadow Scissors, closing it out and CBM is on the scoreboard. Now he's got walls back in the mix, and I'm curious to see just how long the Katarina stays around if CBM gets another victory. Oh, nice. Oh. Ooh. Low starting to add up, side step, three, three, three. And down 4-1 to close it out. Okay, wow, momentum. That was pure control yeah, right there. Still at the wall. Down 4-1 stops the approach. Answer with one of their own. Yo, he has to be careful. The chip. The, the low. Oh, my God, Mark. Oh, Blood. my God. Oh, oh he's going to jump. God, the Harriet is going to go over it. The Harriet wins low. Did I do that? Damn. Damn. By the narrowest margin, Arslan won. And he was one game away. But CBM wasn't done. Shadow Scissors, knock the glasses off. Great poke starting to add up. Yeah, he's good with everything. Look at him. Still working that perfect, and he's gonna solidify the perfect okay. and close out that opening round. Okay. It was tense, with each player testing the other. But ultimately, only one could prevail. Do the scissors again. Nice, he had the sidestep, but he wasn't fast enough. Oh, and that's gonna do it. 
Tournament point. Round. Tournament One point. round away from crowning. Oh, oh wow. big counter. It's, there's going to be a ton of damage. Be a lot of damage. Spins the raise drive. No. Decides to keep it. Maybe use it for a mix up opportunity. And look at that. CBM fighting back. A huge round. An important round. Still tournament point for Arslan. Could have had the opportunity here. Great block. Arsenet on the verge. Can he do it? Will he close it out? One more hit. Oh my god, the pressure! And your final Tekken 7 World Tour Champion will be none other and finally, Arslan Ash! Both Evos and the game's World Tour in one season. Arslan Ash did it. He added even more to his deep play style and he dominated like no one ever had. I don't know a more dominant player at this point when it comes to Tekken 7. You can't put it in any book without talking about Arslan Ash in Pakistan and what they've done. Fittingly, in Tekken 7's final season, Arslan's incredible success reminded all of us that Tekken is stronger than ever and that at the competitive level, because of his achievements, it will never be the same. Man, this guy changed so much of the scene, brought up his community, and really, really changed the storyline from what we were used to seeing. So congratulations to him on this hard-fought victory. The reason we love Arslan's story so much is because it inspires us to believe in a game where once the round starts, your merit is determined solely by your medal. It's a game where the best players didn't just climb to the top, they helped pull the other strong opponents up behind them. Arslan Ash has stamped his name on Tekken 7. He put his country on the game's competitive map, and now he has become its greatest star. So whatever else Tekken 8 may bring, good luck betting against Arslan. Is this stage music? How does anyone actually like focus when this is playing? This is a bop. This is a practice music? This is just a stage and it only plays on one stage. Bro, I gotta play this while I deathmatch. This is based. This goes hard. How does anyone actually focus on inputs when that's playing? Yeah, it's, it nerfs the players.